Hey guys, Omar here, and today I'm gonna to share a little shoot that I did part two, part two of a shoot that I did. If you remember in part one, we did a shoot with Valentina. <laughs> of course you remember. Concentrate. Okay, in that first shoot, we used a manual flash, El Cheapo flashes. You can use any cheap flashes with your Fuji system if you like. If you want to move up from something so simple or you're ready to you know, start using a mono light or using, doing more studio work, then I highly recommend the Flashpoint system, also known as Godox. This flash is great, it's because it works with all the brands. You can actually, if you switch brands, if you decide to go to Sony, <laughs> or if you have Canon or Fuji, you can still use this flash, uh, which is great. You just have to make sure that the firmware is updated so it can actually switch between camera systems. For the shoot, we use predominantly the 56 1.2 on the Fuji, uh, X-T2, and I love the Fuji X-T2 for its dual card slot. <laughs> I'm shooting RAW on one card and uh, JPEG onto the other. For JPEGs, I just set to Provia, and when I process my RAWs, I can show you that, but when I process my RAWs and bring them into Lightroom, I also process them to enter as Provia, because Lightroom gives you the ability to set fake Fuji film sim simulations. So that's always my starting point. Now, if you want to use this mono light, you can get a uh, flashpoint and Godox makes a trigger for Fuji cameras. Now, I don't have the trigger, but I have the Fuji Zoom Mini, what is it called? So this is a great little flash to have just as an emergency flash, but it also can fire the flashpoint Explore 600. So you can actually control the flash from the camera and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so the first thing is we want this little zoom not to fire on the camera. We want to just fire this Flashpoint Explorer. We want the master to not fire. So as soon as you see that, that means this is just now a commander that'll talk to this guy back here. That's the first thing. If you hit slave, it'll go through the different groups. So I have this group, this flash set to A, and you can see here that A is, uh, it says group A. So you just go to the different groups. There is no group B, but if I wanted to move group B, group C, it says it's off. And you go to back to manual, and let's go to A. Right now it says TTL, I don't want that. If you see, if, as I turn it, it actually turns this up here, and you can fire the flash um, and control your flash. If I was going to go higher shutter speeds, uh, you'll see this little high speed sync up here, automatically high speed sync, because now I'm at like a thousandth of a second. So the camera can, as soon as you go, if you go below, as soon as you go below the sync speed, that little high speed sync turns off. You'll see a little F there for Fuji as well, um, but it totally works as a commander. And I love that I could just take this off. Whoa, I could take this off and bring it in, you know, with my Fuji X-T20 as a little emergency flash for like family parties or something. So I recommend this instead of the trigger, although this is a little bulkier on top, it's nice that it's a dual purpose item. This guy can also control not just this, but it can control a whole set of flashes and I'll link up some of those below. Now, before I started using the flash, half the shoot I did with natural light and the other half I did with high speed sync. I'll explain that in a second when I talk about my plan, but just a suggestion if you're working with lights or if you're kind of new with lights or you're new with working with models, sometimes it's not great to use lights just for the sake of using lights, just for the sake of like grabbing tons of gear and setting it up and dragging all these lights out and your poor model sitting there while you set stuff up and you test different powers. If you have pretty natural light available, you should use it for the beginning to warm you up, to warm the model up, to get that rapport going and then take a break, get your lights set up, and then start doing serious flash work where you can control your lights. If you're just doing flash work, if there's no natural light available, make sure you have all your flashes set up and all your powers ready so that your model doesn't lose her mojo waiting for you to like figure things out. Know your gear, people, know your gear. Let me show you the plan. And the plan was do half natural light. Great, and then for the second half, we were gonna use high speed sync. Now, what is high speed sync? Well, your cameras all have what are called, what's called the flash sync speed. So on the Fuji X-T2, 250th of a second is the sync speed. That means if you use a manual flash like we did last time, you cannot use it over the sync speed. 
If you shoot over 250, you're gonna get a black line on your photographs because the curtains that open up will start closing too soon and so you'll show up and they'll show up in your photograph. With high speed sync, the way it works is your flash actually, instead of the curtains opening up and the flash firing, basically the shutter speed is so fast that the curtain, one curtain opens and the other one follows it like this, but the light is pulsating through this little slit right here exposing the picture on your sensor, but only certain flashes can do it. Okay, so if I set my camera to one two thousandth of a second, this flash automatically knows to go to high speed sync. So as soon as doom, the curtains start taking off, this flash will go and fire a bunch of light and we get a photograph. One bad thing with high speed sync, if you had a flash this tiny and it did high speed sync, it would be useless because that pulse of light is kind of weak. So anytime you wanna do high speed sync, you want, if, especially if you're doing it outside with the sun or something like that, if you're shooting at 8,000th of a second, you're gonna want a big, big mama like this mono light or something powerful so it can you know, have enough light to, to pulse in that fast speed. All right, so for the shoot, we had the same space as last time. We had a nice little beautiful couch. We had a lot of space. We had these very large windows behind us. These were great bringing natural uh, light, but they were bringing natural light behind Valentina. I could have turned her around and used the natural light from the windows, but the background was horrible if I did that. So the windows had to be in the background. So I knew part of my plan was to use the backlight uh, almost like a glowy light behind her and use actually my very large modifier as a reflector. So I knew that was part of my plan. There was so much light coming through the windows, I either had to use a high shutter speed or I had to stop down to like F8, F11, and that's not the look I wanted. So that's why high speed sync is great. You can shoot at 1.2, 1.4 wide open, but that shutter speed can crank up. All right, let's go over the photos. Right here, this first image was straight out of camera, uh, and then I post-process. Now, all the post-processing I did was very simple. I did a curves adjustment to give the, a little bit of that film faded look. So here, the, the windows that are behind her, a lot of beautiful light coming in. And again, if you post process, I just love the beautiful creamy tones in the photograph. Just really, really nice. You could see what the 1.2 does. It's just so great. You can, you know, she's on the edge of the couch and the background you could see is so nice and creamy and buttery. Uh, I use face detection, and that's something I'm finding on the X-T2 is fantastic. It's just great at just finding the face. But this is straight out of camera, pro via film simulation and post-processing, you know, bringing the exposure out a little bit. And again, look how blown out the windows are because most of the light is coming out, is coming from behind her. But I'm actually using my flash modifier. I have the flash turned off, but instead of using a reflector, I used my five foot uh, modifier to bounce some of that light back in her face. So that's something if you don't have someone to hold a reflector, you can use your huge umbrella or a big modifier to bounce light from the windows onto that modifier and back to her face. And like I said, you don't have to drag a bunch of flashes around. Like natural light gives you just such gorgeous results. Um, and when I'm using flash, most of the time I'm trying to emulate a window and I use very big modifiers, so it's crazy. Um, here I'm working on my posing. So her arm to me is a little stiff here, that's straight out of camera and then here. And again, giving her direction. Um, the body is amazing. Little nuances can change the mood of a photo from you know, being straight on like this to just turning a shoulder and being softer and tilting a head can change the feel and the mood and they're just millimeters. So when you're working with your models, it's great to get them moving. To, to shake, to put their head down. And models who are experienced like Valentina, they know to move. And, but if you have someone who's not a model, you're just gonna have to sort of tell them to mirror you and say, turn your shoulder, you know, look down this way and, and kind of soften the body. One thing you want to kind of avoid too is uh, shooting the whites of the eyes. Usually the picture that comes after is the keeper. And what I have them is to turn their head and look back. So here, look, I softened up her arm. Her arm was too stiff before, and she looks really beautiful here. And we went from the whites of the eyes, and we had her just turn her eyes towards the camera. Now be careful, because if you have her turn her head, her whole head to the camera, then you have eyes, head, and shoulders to the camera. 
you want to create some interest by having there's three points eyes head and shoulder you could do shoulders one way head and eyes the other way so try those three different combos it's really cool then they don't all have to be dramatic and and sexy photos have your model laugh and smile and get some sweet ones too so that's what we did here with this beautiful pose but her legs by the way her legs are off to the side so that would be terrible if her knees were forward and uh, everything was all in the same yada yada look over here look how beautiful the light is on the back of her uh, of her face that's just the window like wrapping around that beautiful natural light there is no hard border no flash kind of stuff 56 sometimes that you know if you're close to your subject interacting with your subject sometimes you can chop parts off so be careful i chopped her hand off which is bad but the great thing about shooting close is one you get to interact with your subject and two that power of the 1.2 starts to kick in and you know like the back of her shoulder is totally blurry which is beautiful her face is totally sharp back of shoulder is blurry and painterly ah oh, amazing it's like a painting you can soften it up by having her look down and the head tilt head tilt is softer nicer so she's looking back looking at the camera it's great again i wish i would have pulled back just a little bit but we were getting such you know sometimes you get into the shoot too much you don't look at the corners so make sure you check your corners that every part is in there okay here it totally missed focus i don't know why but it's uh it's soft maybe the focus messed up maybe i messed up uh but the next one beautiful the eyes are super sharp and man 1.2 look at her dress is completely blurry and her eyes and eyelashes are like crispy crisp so again like a painting beautiful and soft um, I may have been using eye detection here. So if you're close enough, it will find either eye. There's an auto eye on the Fuji system, so it, it can pick one of the eyes. I think I was using it here. Look at that. It's the Canon likes Valentina better. Hey, 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 I'm over here. My eyes are here. Canon. Then we did a soft, cute one. Again, I was so close, I chopped her head off, but she did a cute little look there uh ranges man don't do all sexy don't do all magazine and powerful have ranges do soft do sweet um you know have your models have a range of looks so that if they're going to use their photographs you know they could they could use this photograph for something like what are you thinking or being cute okay it doesn't all have to be sexy and then i was trying i was experimenting with like i did see that i was shooting kind of close and cropped in it's not my style but these, it's great in these personal shoots you can try things that you don't usually do or are comf comfortable with so sometimes I've seen photographers like chop and it's a little too much for me but they crop in so tight that it's like above the like right under the hairline and uh, they get really nice images so I kind of went there I, I wasn't brave enough to go beyond the hairline but I did go kind of tight to see if I liked it and I kind of like it I'd rather shoot full and then crop in later, but it was nice to do it in camera for once. And then here she just looks so powerful. Sometimes just get them, you know, CEO kind of look at, you know, that's the look I call it, CEO and powerful lady. And uh, she, the soft, beautiful light, you see that rim light on her arm there, looking great. And they're super tough, super sexy, super powerful. So uh, that has to do with the spine. Get the spine up, get her curves. She looks great. Okay, flash. Here we're shooting at 1,000th of a second. 1,000th of a second because I am shooting at F4. So you can imagine how bright those windows are. If I'm at F4, that means I'm trying to cut some of the light out. I can now see the trees out the window. Always start with your ambient. Control the room. Now you can kind of see Valentina there, but if I fire my flash, the ambient isn't really gonna be part of the exposure. Maybe on the floor over here a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about it. So start by setting your camera settings, take a test shot. If the picture is dark, you're on the right track. If it's too pitch black, like you see nothing, bring it back a little bit because your flash is gonna be working extra hard to, and it may not need to. Okay, so what I was experimenting with here is I usually put the light off to the side, but here I had it way high up. I wanted to try some kind of like cinema look. A lot of cinematographers and people who do uh, lighting for movies, 
have lights overhead, lots, lots of light overhead, because that's where the lights are in a room. As photographers, we don't do that. We usually plop a flash like forward, almost like headlights. So I wanted to bring the flash up, and the problem with that is it would cause shadows. So I wanted Valentina to kind of keep her head back. But look how soft the flash is. So by the way, this is straight out of camera, and it looks great. This is a JPEG, Provia, the colors are nice and warm. Uh, but I wanted to give it a little bit more vintage film look. So here I gave it a little bit of a tone, a little bit of a blue tone, and faded a little bit. Um, just to give it a little bit more of a magazine Vogue kind of look. Here you can see the sun coming in. You see through the window, you, you're still getting some of that sun in. Um, but my flash is firing her off there, and that's a really pretty pose. Like, we got triangles going on there. Uh, her shoes look great. I love it. She looks fantastic. The only thing is we're not really highlighting her face, but I think this photograph is more about her dress. Um, and then her face is secondary in this one. Sorry, Valentina. Okay, so here I had Valentina looking up, uh, and then her, her feet are there. Just get the dress, a little bit of the dress, and then put a tone there. This one's like perfume commercial, so <laughs> we went super dramatic for that. All right, then I decided to break the Rokinon out. Uh, with the Rokinon, you have to manually uh, focus the Rokinon. Just made sure I exposed for the windows, so here I am at a thousandth of a second, probably still at four on the Rokinon, and using the same light power half. But uh, these are a little wider, just to get a little different perspective, and I think one of the winning shots besides the 56 is this one. If you've got someone on a couch with a red dress and gorgeous big windows, you may have to shoot wide because if you shoot with the 56, you're only going to get part of the windows. So I brought out the Rokinon and it worked. Uh, very awesome. Very cool. So then we finished off the couch and I turned all the lights off. Sometimes you just have to go back to natural light. The problem with shooting JPEG, be careful with red, is red is a really hard color to get correct. And you can blow out the red channel. So it's good to underexpose red, but it's even better to shoot raw if you're shooting anything that's red because you can pinpoint what color the dress was later. And then you gotta show off the curves. So Valentino was fantastic at, you know, arch back, curve body, uh, and just show off what you got, baby. What we did here was we kept her arm away from her body so it wouldn't block anything there of importance. Uh, it's nice to get these where someone's mid-move if you're always shooting someone when they're stopped, sometimes the shoot can get a little stiff. So we're shooting at such a high shutter speed. We're on uh, 350, that's fast enough to stop motion. And so she is moving from one pose to another and shoot high continuous, it's totally okay. And so she goes from that, shooting high continuous to that, and then you have some moves to pick from, you know, which one is better. <laughs> she went from soft cute to she'll kick your butt. So get some Wonder Woman poses in there where she looks superhero, she looks powerful in the dress. She kicked butt. Great job, Valentina. All right, there you have it, guys. Let me know what you thought of that shoot. Valentina, red dress, high-speed sync, all fantastic. And we even changed her dress. But you don't want to see that. <laughs>